Let's get ready to rumble. I think we have all waited for this moment, guys. It's just like anything. Dale Earnhardt needed Bill Elliott. Muhammad Ali needed Joe Frazier. The Yappa 405 needs an elm log. And we have a nice one right here, guys. I don't know the story behind this. It had come on to the wood yard in one of these loads. I am from the belief that you shouldn't be cutting down healthy elm trees. And this one appeared to be live when it came on. Uh, it has set here for a while and the bark's starting to come off now, but it is still pretty green. And my thought, guys, is we know the 405 is awesome. I am getting close to 200 hours and it has never once jammed. Not a once. And I'm wondering, <laughs> I'm wondering now if it's going to because, you know, anytime you see a log splitter working, anytime there's a new uh, splitter or processor that comes out onto the market, everyone always says, boy, that's a really nice looking log splitter, but can it split Elm? Guys, the 405 today, we are about to find out. Here's my plan, guys. I'm going to get the 405 warmed up first. It is kind of a cold-hearted machine. It takes a while for the hydraulics to get loosened up on it. So I've put an easy splitting log on it. One, to get it warmed up, but two, to give us a baseline. So this is a pin oak. Oak, I think, is a real easy splitting log. It gives the perfect split no trouble, but now we're going to see how it splits elm, guys. This log is a 12 inch elm. It does have a taper to it. So what I'm going to try and pull off here, guys, I'm gonna cut this into three pieces and I'm gonna start with the skinniest end first, just to build up the drama. Cause I'm curious to see if the four or five can handle this too. I don't even know what this thing is like for it to jam up. So we're all, <laughs> maybe we'll be finding that out here. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark this off into my sections. I have my tape measure marked so that when I cut a log off, I don't have any waste. This mark accounts for the kerf to have nice 16 inch pieces. So we're gonna cut this log into thirds. I do have a significant bend in this one and I'm just going to cut this portion out. So let's measure from this end for this section. And we can cut this one right here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this section out myself because it's crooked. Maybe we'll run this through, we'll see how it goes. All right, so let me get suited up in full PPE and let's get this cut into uh, three sections. We'll get them loaded onto the table and we'll get busy. taken off those chaps and the steel toes. Man, is it hot out. So here's your elm, guys. It is one of those trees that everyone uses as a gauge on how good are your splitters, how effective are your processors. If you've trained your eyes on an elm, they have that, they're shaped like a vase, man. And they, uh, the boughs of the trees go right all the way up through the very top. So you get some real big uh, branches way up into the tops of the elms. Because of the way they grew, people would plant them on both sides of the street because they would meet at the top and it was just great shade. It was like a green tunnel that you would drive through. Well, 
enter Dutch Elm disease, which ironically showed up in the United States in Ohio. And one elm tree gets sick that we've planted them so close to each other that roots were touching. One tree would get sick, they would all get sick and die. So Dutch elm disease has just devastated the elms here in the United States, but I still see there's a lot of them that are out there. Which is where I feel we shouldn't be cutting down healthy elm trees. I think you gotta let them stay. And there are organizations that deal with the elm and they look for survivors. And talk about an iconic American tree, the elm. You know, the Liberty tree, that was an elm tree. There was a lot of treaties in the early formation of the country that were signed under elms. And in Ohio, we have a town called Logan Elm Village. And that's where the famous um, Indian chief, Logan, uh, gave his famous speech, Logan's Lament. Maybe I'll put a link to that down below. It's just one of those trees. But for us, for firewood, it is a tough wood because it doesn't split. They would use the elm for like wagon wheel hubs and stuff because it doesn't split. Butcher blocks, anything that required just tough wood, they would use the elm for it. Uh, but, you know, like I said, Dutch elm disease really <laughs> put a hurting on this tree. There are still a number of them out there. In fact, when you're driving into Ohio on Interstate 80, there is just a lone elm growing in the median as soon as you get into Ohio. And I really do think it's because they don't, they didn't want to cut it down, you know, because the elms are precious. And you still see elms growing around. I've noticed that in a lot of these schools, the older schools, there's usually a big elm tree that's growing in front of them. And it's just a beautiful tree. And the way you identify them is by the leaf. You know, it has what you think is just a normal shaped leaf, but if you look at the stem, it's asymmetrical. And that is the classic indication of an elm tree. Most leaves that you see like this on beech or crab apples, they're just a mirror image of each other. But always look at the base of an elm. If it's asymmetrical like this, it's probably an elm. And if you're still not sure what it is, Try to split it. If it doesn't split, you got yourself an elm tree. Okay, too much talking. Let's get these logs loaded onto the live deck and let's get them run. Let's see how the 405 can handle this. This is probably the first time ever, guys. There's not many 405s on YouTube and I know for sure I've never ran an elm through this. So this is a first in the world, elm through a 405. Here we go. I don't know guys I'm I want the 405 to to be able to handle this but I'm I'm not sure and if you are a fan of the Woodhounds podcast that I do with my good friend Dan from back 40 firewood we had an entire episode dedicated to the elm tree not only for firewood but for everything it's contributed to the formation of our great country so I'll put a link to that in the description too but now let's get this 405 fired up and let's see if it can handle an elm. So this is the 405. We had some big rain and as soon as you uh, let it sit, you get these rust spots on here. But the machine's been working flawlessly. It's just a great hardworking machine. The splitter power is excellent. It uses the perfect split. So it's only taking off four pieces at a time on the, at the bottom. But can it still handle elm? I don't know. I do know that this is not as sharp as it used to be. I'm coming up with all these excuses for the 405 if it can't run it, you know? So, you know, the knives aren't as sharp as they used to be. Uh, the sun was in my eyes. Uh, I had a bad night's sleep last night. 
you know, I can keep going. But uh, will the 405 be able to handle this? I'm as curious as you are, guys. I think we've all seen this run oak. Oak is an easy splitting wood and, it, and the 405 just makes mince meat out of it. Nice little four inch pieces. Just ideal uh, value added firewood. No problems. I've run knots, crotches, everything through this. It's never once stopped, but it's never run elm. So let's start with the smallest end and then we're gonna finish with the biggest, if we can get there. And that sun's in my eyes. You are watching history, guys. Elm through a 405.
I'm impressed. It's just whizzing through this stuff. But we're now we're getting into the big end. This is where the tapers start. We're at nine and a half inches here, and we know that the far end was 12. And I can hear and feel it grunting on nine, but I mean, it's handling it really good. I'm impressed. Let's keep going. This is our last log. Meat. Elm was no match, guys. At least this one. What I noticed right away is, you know, it's still stringy, but it just seems to knife through it. And it handled it easy. Uh, it was clearly grunting there at the end, but it was nothing like I thought. I thought the ram was just going to hit that log and stop. So. You saw it here live, guys, on YouTube here at Ohio Woodburner. A world's first elm through the 405, 12-inch elm, no problem. The 405 has earned its stripes. It's the king of the hill right now, guys. Oak and elm. Ugh. This isn't going to be a new scent at Bath and Body Works anytime soon, guys. I can tell you that much. Uh, gosh, world class. Guys, the Yapa just makes gorgeous firewood. 
and it is strong, it is tough, and I have never once had it jammed. Doesn't mean that it can't. There's probably a log out there somewhere, but it hasn't come onto the wood yard yet. It's handled everything I've thrown at it. And that's my first elm that's ever come onto the land. First elm I've ever put through it, no problems. I've always said, you know, there, there isn't a owner of a firewood processor in this world that doesn't wish it had more splitting power. But what can I say? It has split everything that I've put through it. Now that's what the perfect split. So, you know, it's just taking off those pieces at the bottom. Next elm that I get in, we'll put the traditional knives in and we'll see how it handles that, I promise. If I ever do get another elm. They don't really come in on the log trucks though. They're either, they've long been harvested or people don't cut down healthy elms. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Give me a thumbs up if you think the 405 is world class. I hope everyone has a great day.